acid reflux, what it is, why it occurs, and how it is treated. What is acid reflux? Acid reflux, or heartburn, is a burning sensation that is felt in the chest just behind the breastbone. The burning sensation is caused due to the difference in acidity between the two tissues. The pH of the esophagus is approximately 7, whereas the pH of stomach acid is around 1 to 2. Chronic acid reflux events, clinically defined as gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD, is characterized by having a weak lower esophageal sphincter, high stomach acid production, or ulcers. The stomach lining is composed of many gastric pits. These pits are hosts to a variety of epithelial cells. Activated by gastrin, chief cells release pepsinogen, which is converted to pepsin, a protease. Parietal cells are responsible for pumping protons into the stomach, which are responsible for stomach acids' low pH. Mucus neck cells secrete mucus under vagal stimulation in order to protect the stomach lining from low pH. Enterochromaffin-like cells release histamine. We will see how this is important later. As seen here, the number of parietal cells is positively correlated with acid output of the stomach, so these cells are responsible for producing stomach acid. Therefore, in treating chronic or acute acid reflux episodes, we must target parietal cells. Due to the fact that esophageal surgery is highly invasive and rarely yields comforting results, the best way to treat GERD is by controlling acid production. There are two ways that we do this. One is by preventing protons from being released into the stomach. Medicines that do this are characterized as proton pump inhibitors. The second way is by preventing the biological cascade of events that influence parietal cells to produce stomach acid. These medicines are called H2 blockers. Here is a parietal cell. The top of the picture is the lumen or the gastric pit facing side, and the bottom here is the basolateral surface. The parietal cell has an area called the intracellular canaliculus. The active transporter of the parietal cell is hydrogen potassium ATPase, as seen here. As chlorine is transported into the cell, bicarbonate from carbonic anhydrase is exported out via an antiport. These protons from the carbonic anhydrase reaction are pumped via hydrogen potassium ATPase into the intracellular canaliculus. Chlorine is transported extracellularly here as potassium chloride. Via a single displacement reaction, hydrochloric acid, which causes the very low pH in gastric juice, is formed. Proton pump inhibitors deactivate hydrogen potassium ATPase. When this transporter is deactivated, the movement of hydrogen becomes limited, and hydrochloric acid does not form very readily. Proton pump inhibitors has a delayed onset of a couple of hours. However, they remain in the body for up to three days. There are three medication types, prescription, over-the-counter, and a suspension powder. The most common chemical used is that of omeprazole, seen here. The imidazole derivative, a functional group containing three carbons, four hydrogens, and two nitrogens, is of core importance in the inhibiting of the proton pump. Notice how most of these proton pump inhibitors contain the imidazole group, as indicated by the suffix of their name. Common name proton pump inhibitors include Prilosec, Prilosec OTC, Prevacid, and Nexium. The purple pill. The second way of minimizing acid production is by regulating the activity of the parietal cell. H2 blockers, or histamine blockers, act very quickly. However, the body does not retain them long. There are three secretagogues that stimulate proton release in parietal cells, acetylcholine, gastrin, and histamine. Here, the enterochromatin-like cells, or EFCs, release histamine into the interstitial fluid between the EFC and parietal cells. Parietal cells have histamine receptors, which cause the cell to pump protons into the lumen when bound. Notice the strict chemical and vagal regulation of acid production. Acetylcholine and gastrin binding is dependent on calcium entry into the cell. Histamine binding, however, is not. When histamine binds to its receptor H2, 
Cyclic AMP levels rise in the cell. Cyclic AMP then activates protein kinase A, which increases transcription factors of cytoskeletal proteins. The cytoskeletal proteins transport hydrogen potassium ATPase to the cellular surface, which stimulates increased production of protons. By inhibiting histamine, less hydrogen potassium ATPases are located on the cellular surface, resulting in less proton and less acid production. Some prescription H2 blockers include Tagamet, Pepsid, Axid, and Zantac. Over-the-counter medications include Tagamet HB, Pepsid AC, and Axid AR. So which acid inhibitor should you use? You should make your choice dependent on your symptoms and whether you are acute or chronically affected. For acute and rare cases of acid reflux, H2 blockers are the best option because they relieve symptoms within an hour and can stay in your system for up to 12 hours. They affect the histamine receptor on the basolateral surface of parietal cells to prevent proton production. Some side effects of using H2 blockers are sore throat, diarrhea, nausea, headache, and weakness. For common chronic acid reflux, proton pump inhibitors may be used. They take a little bit longer to take effect, however they remain in the body for up to three days. Proton pump inhibitors directly affect hydrogen potassium ATPase. Side effects of taking proton pump inhibitors are similar to that of H2 blockers. If symptoms persist for a duration of time, even if using either of these drugs, consult a physician for a proper regimen because chronic exposure to acid reflux can lead to more serious ailments.